thanks for being there. A truly remarkable display of honesty and integrity was the case of a young Nigerian hotel worker, Ngozi Mary Kekwaru, who recently found $70,000 in one of the rooms in the hotel where she works, and bracing all odds, she ensured the misplaced sum was returned to the rightful owner. The question now is, how many Nigerians would do such? This poser took Diana Ajale in search of this unusual young lady. $1,000? Seriously, I, I don't know. I feel I'm going to return it to. But you know, there's a lot of pressure that comes with money. You understand? So it depends on the mood I am at that moment. I've not seen that kind of money before. First of all, I will, I will be shocked. <laughs> Seriously, and I, I will, what I will just do, I will just call, like, my superior. Hmm. Huge amount of money indeed. $70,000. Over 50 million naira in Nigerian currency can definitely change an average Nigerian lifestyle and probably that of her family life too. But is there any amount of money that is more than someone's peace of mind? No amount of money. This is my workplace. I have no choice than to like look for the owner and give it back. Why is it like inside the bush? Or uh, you know, on the roadside is my money. <laughs> for those who are still doubting that good and trustworthy Nigerians exist, here is Ngozi Kekwaru, a hotel worker, proving beyond that doubt as she returned a sum of seven thousand misplaced dollars found. How did it happen? Let's hear from her. I work in the guest service department. So on this day, I was called to come help fix a safe. The safe had an issue. So when I got to the room, I, I, I was the only person in the room. I, I opened the safe and lo and behold, I saw a bag of money. When I got close, I was dollar. I was actually scared. So I had to pick up the phone and call the office. I found something and I was asked to bring it to the um, office and when I got there it was handed over to the management. Now what does the character of this young lady portray for Nigeria as a nation and her citizens? goes a long way to tell a very fantastic good story about Nigeria that we are reliable and uh, we have Nigerians that the whole wide world can love and be ready to do business with. She has represented Nigeria well. You know be a good defender of the good character of Nigeria. The good news here is that beyond other commendations pouring in from high and low across the country, Ngozi is already reaping the reward for exemplifying honesty and integrity. As one of Nigeria's celebrities, David Adeliki, popularly known as Davido, has rewarded her for proving to Nigerians and the world that despite some negative perceptions about Nigerians, there are many good individuals right here in Nigeria. A good example, we have many honest Nigerians. Now from complete helplessness in bondage to glorious freedom is the amazing story of transformation in the life of Asta Easter, who was starved and confined in solitude for over two years by her husband. Now, kudos to humanitarian actors, medical personnel, and the media, as life cannot be this better for Asta, who had lost all hopes of seeing better days ahead. Pauline Kujevana's update is heartwarming. Seisa, who was stuffed, turned pale, emaciated, and traumatized by the confinement, regained her freedom from the inhuman condition she was subjected to by her husband after a tip off from a whistleblower. Kudos to the inspiring effort of the humanitarian actors, who later referred her to the state specialist hospital for thorough medical attention and services were rendered free of charge by the hospital. She is better now, she tolerates orally, she fits very well, she is she is just in with just very well with her compared to when she was admitted. And now we are handing over her management to the psychiatrist. Uh, for going to neuropsychiatric, I will be part of it because we have a, a component of a such kind of drug with our organization, which will maybe by the time the doctors prescribe, and then we can make the supplies of such drugs to her. It was therefore 
a moment of joy for Asta to revisit her home, transformed by cemented floor, arranged with mats, mattress, pillow, mosquito net, clothes and nutritional food, support from well spirited individuals. Lale. 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 For the husband, our father finding reveals that he locked her in the room uh, to avoid children from stoning her or coming to disturb her. Having been uh, released on bail, we are still watching it. If there's anything that comes us again, we are going to re-arrest him again. And he has promised to sell one of his goats to take her to neuropsychiatry for further treatment. The compound children who were excited to see us to back home after one month for medical attention had the humanitarian actor Lucy Yunana warning them against troubling her life. We will surely um, keep a tab on her and I, and I want to say that we should not wait for him to sell the goods for her to see um, the psychiatrist. They should follow up on her. It's very important. Now we go to Bayelsa State where a reporter, Ebenimi Zetimimjola, is set to tell us the story of two children from Igbo Guinea community who were abducted by their supposed neighbor in the pretext of assisting with care and how operatives of the gender unit Bayelsa State Command rescued them. Pulled out freely, this time not of agony but of joy. Tears of love and mothers reuniting with their children after a moon from five days in the hands of one stranger to another across states. Community members rolled out drums to celebrate the return of Little Prince, age two, and Success, age four. <laughs> For the mothers, what more can they say than to appreciate God, the Nigerian police, and all for the rock-solid support and prayers? It was not easy, but God made it easy for us. God has done it again. And I want to still say thank you to the police. I love this boy so much. When this boy left me, I was crying. I was very down. I was praying to God to make it possible for me to see my son. And here I am, I am with my son. I'm very happy. I want to thank God for the police, for their efforts in this matter. I want to say thank you to everybody, even the NCA people. Police operatives of the gender units, Bioso State Command, busted the child trafficking syndicate and recovered the children in Abia and Enugu states after painstaking investigations. They are supposedly neighbors that took the children away. We were arrested at Ugeli. That's um, uh, early this month. They were arrested at Ugeli. And uh, further investigation led our team to Abia where they arrested other two suspects and um, further inter upon further interrogations the suspects uh, mentioned the locations where these children were sold and our team went further to Inugu command where they recover success and um, they came back to Abia that's on the 22nd of this month where they recovered uh, Prince so we'll continue with our investigation. Um, the total sum that was paid to the end receivers was uh, allegedly 1.6 million. Choma, who took the children under the pretext to buy drugs, said she was given 120,000 naira, while others received 250,000 and 800,000 naira. I rent the place so, and I make friends with them. Normally, give them money every day they cook and they eat. <laughs> How much? 120. I'm the one that called the buyer. They give me 800 now. The Bayasa State Police Command spokesman has a word of advice. And their parents and caregivers should also be careful uh, not to just uh, trust people who have been their neighbors just for some few months. The suspects are undergoing further interrogation and the police have promised due diligence in the matter. <laughs> classic example of evil neighbors now it sounds unimaginable for junior secondary school students to plan kidnapping of themselves for ransom 
Isn't it strange? Well, Abiola Ario said it truly happened in Oka Akoko, Akoko Southwest local government area of Undo State. Oh, this truly changing as unimaginable stories that are better left as fiction are no longer mere make beliefs. This is the story of two siblings from Oka Akoko. The two sisters, 13 and 15 years of age in junior secondary school 1 and 3 at Oka Akoko were declared missing by their parents who alerted Ondo State Security Network, codenamed Amotekun Call for rescue. What a twist to have realized that the young girls were not missing but faked their kidnap to collect money from their mother's ransom. I don't know. Eh? Nasita. Eh? I don't know. Maybe you said it was because your mother was entreating you. It's my sister. It's my sister. As if she's not the as if she's not the one that bombed me. Huh? As if she's not the one that bombed me. We did not threaten the cabbage. Where did you get cabbage? It's my mom that gave cabbage for. The state commander, Amate Konko, confirmed the girls are still in custody, having paraded them alongside 26 other criminal elements arrested for various offenses in different parts of the state. We moved into action and later on found that the pulse with which they were negotiating with the monarch of the town actually came from the phone of the girls. So we apprehended the girls and um, we meet them to tell us why they committed such a dastardly act of kidnapping on themselves. They are minor, so we are trying to rehabilitate them. Newsline visited Ayegule community, Oka Koko, where the parents of the girls live, but all efforts to speak with the mother and the traditional head of the community proved abortive. The girls' act, according to a medical expert, could be peer pressure or lack of family values, which she said has power to shape people. Parents who have disposed the children to such thoughts and to such action should look into their family and the social environment they are into, their families, to the way they handle their children, the minors, the way they expose them, needs to be looked into, needs to be worked on. As investigation into the case continues, Newsline will keep you updated. I think those children, they need more counseling. I mean, junior secondary school students. Now, excellence is never accidental and requires hard work, dedication, and intelligence. Celebrating excellence and those who tirelessly push students to excel is one way to encourage more of such. One man who knows this is philanthropist Chief Eric Omofia, and he demonstrated it when he donated a cash sum to the highest jump, the student with the highest jump score for the 2023 examination. 16-year-old Kamsi Yochuku Nkechinyere, who made outstanding score of 360 at the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board examination, is not just a reflection of excellence, but the fact that she scored 99 over 100 in chemistry and 98 in mathematics says a lot. Her brilliance did not just happen. Kamsi has always been that studio student with a consistent reading habit from home to school. Lisa really likes to read. If she's not reading, then I don't know what she'll be doing. Yes, I like books. I like to read. As many as I can get my hands on, get my hands on. Okay, so like averagely, how many hours a day do you read? Do you study? A day, mm. about maybe four, five, maybe six, like five or six. It didn't come easy. Uh, the foundation, um, we started early. It didn't come easy. Uh, the foundation, um, we started early. As a pat on the back for having the highest jam score for 2023 and to encourage her academic efforts, philanthropist Chief Eric Omofia gave a cash award to Kamsi and other students from her school who also had outstanding scores. 
This is 2.5 million. I want you to remain the best. Don't let uh, the generation of today occupy your mind. Or don't deviate from the good teaching from your school, from your parents, of course, from your senior. So I pray to God that uh, more of you will come up Amen. from every good school in this country. And teachers and the school administrators also received cash donations. In our school, we have zero tolerance for examination malpractice. We don't, um, it's a no-go area. The students themselves, they are aware. The teachers, you know, know about that. So every, it's, a, it's a culture. Come see, I challenged her so well. A lot of people have written jam and I've seen their jam score before Kamsi's set. So I told uh, the first set, second set that wrote, some of them were scoring 80 something percent, 90 something percent in jam. So when it got to Kamsi's set, I told them, I told, I said, this is the score that we've been having. Now I want your score to beat the scores that we've been having before now. So they took the challenge upon themselves with a drill. Chief Eric Omofia's recognition and donations amplifies the saying that nothing creates a sense of community and appreciation like acknowledging contributions and accomplishments. And I must say, great effort. So it's good to encourage people like that. I would say, well done, Chief Eric Omofia. Attaining great academic heights is an essential and comprehensive booklet for any student seeking academic success. On this account, a school named Great Heights Academy in Abuja is a frontliner. Ibrahim Dan Amidu was at the graduation ceremony of the nursery pupils up to secondary school students of the school. This league of bright and determined children have been preparing for their awaited graduation from the Great Heights Academy, a milestone event which symbolized the culmination of their hard work, friendships, and countless memories shared throughout their journey of education. The school was abuzz with excitement as each student had a special role to play in the graduation ceremony with drama, songs, and heartwarming speech to commemorate their shared experiences in Islamic knowledge. <laughs> Following the speeches and inspiring words of encouragement from teachers, it was time for the students to receive their well-earned awards of prizes. One by one, they walked across the stage, their names announced proudly. They helped me achieve this, and I'm very grateful to the school as well. This school is nice. My mates, they have always supported me, and with that, I was able to be the outstanding student. Some of the parents at the occasion had some words of gratitude and anticipation of a promising future. The standard of education in Great Heights is second to none in terms of performance, in terms of leadership, and in terms of the molding behavior that is worthy of credit, crediting the school. I have a daughter in GS3. The, the Islamic background alone is something that we, we, can, we, we cannot forget. And so, the story of the Great Heights Academy graduation became a tale of triumph, friendship, and the everlasting power of education. It served as a beacon of hope for generations to come, inspiring a country to celebrate the journey of learning and the bright futures that lie ahead.
until May 31st, 2024 in the Zenith Better Life Promo 3. To qualify, simply open the Zenith Bank account. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Live the better life with Zenith Bank. Oh, you can reach the stars. Anything your heart believes. Oh, just a little try. There's no limit to your dreams. Here's to the intentional ones. To those who break through the limits. To those who always go for it. OVMA. Aww, I wish you were here. I'm always with you. But it's not the same without you. MTN 5G's amazing technology will change how we experience life and the internet. Get ready to encounter the incredible and remember, no juju, na MTN 5G. We don't like to eat better, more nutritious meals, more veggies, but we want it tasty and easy too. Hmm. No cubes. That's the secret. Made with real ingredients like chicken, parsley, and garlic. And enriched with iron, so your meals are better for you. And more delicious, too. That's the cocoa. Let's give it some accolades. Change your world by changing what's on your plate. When the world stops spinning, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. When the world stops spinning, I'm lucky. When the world stops spinning, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. When the world keep up with me, come on, let's go. When the world stops spinning, independent women, come on, and I'll list it. I'm lucky. When the world stops spinning, Africa, you feel me? Come on, I'll list it. New styles from Darling, find your beautiful. Does your toothpaste give you complete fresh protection? New Close Up Toothpaste Complete Fresh Protection takes care of your five important oral care needs. It gives you strong teeth, prevents tooth holes, cleans deeply, fights bacteria, and gives you fresh breath. Complete Fresh Protection from Close Up. Welcome back. Two organizations that share common ideologies in creating a healthier future by addressing hygiene challenges are increasing awareness through the dental hygiene quest for schools in three states of the Federation. The project aimed at promoting sustainable health partnership practices in the country is a partnership between Rekid Sub-Saharan Africa and Wellbeing Foundation Africa. Adiola Komi Akere will help us understand the impact of the quest and the ambassadors. Is committed to attaining the Sustainable Development Goals and has taken high-level action to meet the SDG 6 in order to achieve universal and sustainable access by 2030. The Dental Hygiene Quest is born out of a need to improve hand washing among Nigerians, especially from younger age, to reduce the risk of preventable diseases, encourage hygiene practices while increasing awareness. The initiative is a free and engaging teaching curricula for children in primary schools. We have to understand one data point which shows only 8% of Nigerian population actually practices proper hand washing. And that says the context that is a need to drive awareness and education amongst the population. And 
till now we have reached out almost like 9 million children and expecting mom with our hygiene uses and hygiene information. Already, the program has exceeded its initial target of 41,200 individuals. But we are not stopping there. Recognizing the importance of measuring our impact, we have partnered with Shrin to conduct both baseline, which is at the start of the event, at the start of the assessment, and online assessments. And these assessments have provided valuable information that will help guide our future endeavors and allow us to gauge the effectiveness of our teaching. So we can always iterate and improve how we make this a better program going forward. Of course, this is a closeout event of the first phase of the program. So we're looking forward to the second phase where we plan to go um, deeper into the communities, um, engage more communities, engage more schools across the three core states in Lagos, Kwara, and Abuja, Abuja um, FCT Abuja. Some teachers attested to the impact of the program in their students' lifestyle and communities. The in between fingers, doing to the other fingers, then you drop to the wrist with your palms, then the other finger, then the thumbs. Winners of essay competition earlier conducted as part of a program were presented with prizes and some named ambassadors of the Dental Hygiene Quest program. The initiative is a collaboration between Racket Sub-Sahara Africa, manufacturer and distributor of products including personal care, nutrition, toiletry and health care and Wellbeing Foundation Africa, a brainchild of Tony Ojora Saraki. Initiative that should be encouraged. Now, 63 law school students drawn from 23 local government areas of River State now have better opportunity to advance their legal profession with scholarship from OB Lulu Briggs Foundation. How did the students react to the kind gesture? Let's hear from Kinsley Amajiri, who was at the presentation ceremony. The OB Lulu Briggs Foundation Law Students Scholarship Award is in agreement with the foundation's belief in the power of education to improve access and support students who would otherwise be shut out due to financial constraints to actualize their goals. Suanu Mukoga and Homa Opera are among the 63 recipients of the 2023 edition of this scholarship award. The cash grant of 120,000 Naira and a laptop for these two beneficiaries, like their colleagues, would be helpful in meeting contemporary demands for efficient law practice in a digital era. I'm a proud beneficiary of Obi Lulu Briggs scholarship. You know, a laptop is a very essential tool. I want to appreciate the foundation mostly for this. This is a life-changing opportunity. The OB Lulu Briggs Foundation is indeed aware of the challenges students go through in pursuit of a career in law. In response to this challenge, Chairman of the Foundation, Dr. Senye OB Lulu Briggs, says the program targets to provide a helping hand and support for brilliant young minds towards becoming leaders in the legal field. We have chosen you, the best qualifying 63 law graduates from your different universities, because we believe in your potential to make a real difference in River State. We have faith that you will use the resources the foundation is providing you to wisely further your legal education, enhance your skills, and ultimately contribute to improving your immediate communities. A former chief judge of Piasa State, in her lecture on keeping abreast of emerging legal trends, notes that the integration of technology into the legal profession entails that lawyers develop literacy and digital tools to enhance their service delivery. The choice of the topic technology and legal profession is indeed an emerging legal trend, which calls for all in the profession to apply ourselves with every sense of purpose. I am the one who fights that financial resources are not to be available to the parents and the parents and those who are supporting the education. So 
to be used when they are giving well. The beneficiaries were formally presented with a cash award of 120,000 naira and a laptop at the event. Great way to honor achievements. Moving on, the footprints of great men are not only indelible but visible in the lives they impact, the institutions they build, and ideas they promote. This is true of former chairman, board of directors, Nigerian Breweries PLC, Chief Jamodu Kolawole Babalola, who has brought monumental changes to the industrial sector in Nigeria. For this reason, the drums were rolled out in his honor at a colorful sent forth ceremony in Lagos. And it was an evening to honor a man who carved a niche for himself through an era of quintessential leadership in the corporate world and by extension the industrial sector. So, people from different organizations and industries came together to celebrate the man they admire and respect, Chief Kola Jamudu, whose legacy cuts across many spheres, including nation building. It must be you. He must be you, he must be you, I need you, I need you for my family. His many years of work reflect his unwavering commitment to serving humanity, and the testimonies resounding from this crowd of admirers amplify his impact. He was one of those that told the government, why don't we have a ministry of industry? Why are we focusing on trade only and not industries? And that tells you where it's coming from. We're here to celebrate you and to thank you for the hard work you have put in, for the symbol of leadership you have been, for representing the Nigerian entrepreneur well. The one-time Minister of Industry served in different capacities on numerous platforms in the sector, leaving behind outstanding records. Chief Jamudu was a non-executive director of the Board of Nigerian Breweries for 17 years and also became the longest serving chairman for 15 years. Under his leadership, Nigerian Breweries witnessed significant market expansion and growth. We're really proud of the work he has done. What do you wish him for? I wish him all the very best. I wish him is a great man. The wisdom, the resilience, the determination of our chairman, together with the team, has made Nigerian breweries what it is today. For the man of the moment, serving the company, which is now in the hands of capable people, gives him a sense of fulfillment and pride. I am very, very happy to state that Nigerian breweries managed to to stay on top and stay tall among sequels. Chief Kola Jamudu retired as chairman of the Board of Nigerian Breweries in April 2023. Great celebration there. Now, the Corporate Social Responsibility Project of Total Energies and Partners are like footprints of good deeds spread across the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. Feedback our correspondent Lydia Samson got from befitting, benefiting communities shows the impact is indelible. Imu, Benue, Enugu, Anambra, and Bono states, the impactful but five corporate social responsibility projects of Total Energies Upstream Nigeria Limited and Partners, NNPC Limited, Sapetro, Sinuk, and Prime 130 is giving new lease of life to beneficiaries. This is as the batch five corporate social responsibility projects. Let's begin from Oshun State, where a multi-million naira solar-powered borehole and treatment plant was inaugurated and handed over to MEC Lee High School in Oshun State by Total Energies Upstream Nigeria Limited and Partners. And want to highly appreciate NNPC Total Energies for bestowing this gift on us as well. And it may seem happen to be one 
all the towels in these zones. The project is very good and very good. And uh, I think uh, it's going to be very useful for this community and this group at large. Similarly, inauguration of Women Development and Skills Acquisition Center on Moharan Kwara State by Total Energies Upstream Limited and partners saw the handover of a multi-million naira women development and skills acquisition center to the people and government of Kwara state witnessed by leaders of the community the project is described as the first of its kind representative of the managing director and country chair total energies upstream nigeria limited mike sansa retweets that total energies and partners are committed to positively impacting communities across the six geopolitical zones of the country by complementing government's efforts in education health care portable water as well as the empowerment of women and youths it is in a deliberate attempt to cater for various groups that the center is composed of four different training halls for fashion design catering hotel management and computer training it was another live impacting facility in Imo state as the partners inaugurated and handed over a block of five science laboratories fully equipped with state-of-the-art science equipment to national high school Imo state total energies upstream nigeria limited NNPC Limited and partners also constructed and handed over a fully equipped model school block on two floors consisting four laboratories, ICT center, six furnished classroom, staff office, solar powered borehole to the government and people of Benue State. In Waver State, the Women Development and Skills Acquisition Center Buguma is another testament to the partners' magnificent and magnanimous resolve at making the world a better place. My hometown have the opportunity to have an equipment like this and we also thank the sponsors. It's a very good one. Our people will take advantage of the opportunity given them. Now to Enugu, the capital of Enugu State, like most cities on hill, Access to portable water is limited. The solar, borehole and water treatment plant by Total Energies Upstream Nigeria Limited and Partners, the people say, is not just a huge relief, but a life-saving intervention. The project solves problems of the community dependent on natural streams and the rainwater. Total Energies Upstream Limited and Partners built and handed over a mammography center to the General Hospital Onitsha, a number of state. The mammography center, experts said, will provide patients access to effective technologically enhanced screening for early detection, treatment, and reduction in breast cancer mortality. In Bangnu State, the Emergency and Infectious Disease Hospital Meduguri, inaugurated by Total Energies Upstream and Partners, keep C is a major step in changing the healthcare narrative. Like all good deeds, the beneficiaries said Total Energies Upstream Nigeria Limited, NNPC Limited and partners have planted their footprints on the sands of time. And again, we just have to pay some bills. So see you soon. The place of cultural values and norms of the people in promoting unity and diversity was exemplified when the royal family of Ododo Okene Kogi State gave their daughter out in marriage, Stephanie Suni Ododo, to another royalty, Jeremiah Olufariti, in Ijero Ekiti State. Abdul Wahid Bibire covered the colorful wedding ceremony. Roads led to Ilorin, the Kwara State capital, as dignitaries from far and near converged on the city to attend the wedding ceremony between Stephanie Suni Ododo and Jeremiah Olufalati. Culture, values, and traditional norms were on display. <laughs> The marriage ceremony began with a traditional engagement at the bride resident with the groom's family officially asking for Stephanie's hand in marriage. The groom later presented the diary to the bride before God and humanity. We thereafter proceeded to the church for the holy matrimony 
where Apostle Muiwa Areu enumerated steps to a successful marriage and pray for a beautiful life for the couple who also vowed to live together as husband and wife. <laughs> Jeremiah and Stephanie met in the church and spoke on what attracted them to each other. We have the same value, we have the same pursuit, the same vision. So, and um, you know, people with the same vision are able to carry out together. And um, that is what um, will keep us together. His love for the things of God and the way he loves people generally. He's a generous man and a man that loves me genuinely. They should not allow a third party into their affairs. They'll be faithful to each other and uh, always believe that God is with them. A Christian home that people will see and glorify the name of God. They should put hope in God and trust in God for everything. They should be patient, they should be enduring. They have their successes. Let them, let them form a part alone and um, live on peacefully. Guests were later treated to local and international cuisines at the reception venue and it was a merry moment as people danced gaily to rejoice with the couple. <laughs> wish them all the blessings they can think of. Our last commercial zone queue will take them and be right back. Babes, we got to go. Did they come? I need more time. Chill. We got to go now. Guys, what's the move? Take the fire escape to the west wing and head to the roof. Sass, you walk up here. You go on home. Sasuke! Sasuke! The action continues. Fire on with Super Commando Energy Drink. Now available in 50 CL Fed Bottle. Super Commando Energy Drink. Fire on. Hey, welcome to the Star Times 35th anniversary celebration. <laughs> to say thank you to every Star Times family for being an integral part of our journey. Star Times has decided to give you a price slash on decoders. Yes, we are slashing the price of our antenna decoder from 8,900 Naira to 7,500 Naira and the dish decoder from 13,300 Naira to 9,900 Naira. But that's not all. Existing subscribers can recharge for two months on their current bouquet and get upgraded to the next higher bouquet. And if you recharge on the classic or super bouquet, you will receive a fantastic reward of extra 15 days of free viewing. You can enjoy our top local and international content. So, what are you waiting for? Quickly, visit any Star Times outlet around you to recharge or buy your decoder between June 12th to August 31st to enjoy this fabulous offer. Wow! Yay! Let the celebration begin! Star Times, entertain your family. Since 1971, Nigeria's foremost human capital development institution, the Industrial Training Fund, ITF, has been at the forefront of equipping Nigerians with skills for national growth. Today's ITF has repositioned and refocused its programs, forging new partnerships locally and internationally to effectively deliver on its mandate. With 37 area offices and 5 industrial skills training centers across the country, ITF is pushing to reduce unemployment by providing relevant technical and vocational skills for employability and entrepreneurship in diverse trades and crafts. Whether you're a public or private organization seeking to improve the skills of your personnel or an individual looking to acquire skills that will increase your chances of employment or even to help start your own business, today's ITF has a program for you. Speak to us today. Contact our area offices nationwide or visit our website www.itf.gov.ng. ITF, developing the nation's human resource. Oh, oh, that's wonderful! And that is what champions do! Now good football with the dog! He has nailed that! Now only Go TV fit give you all the La Liga! Game changer! 
Serie A. And it's into the net again. Premier League and other better football competitions. Get your Go TV decoder, Go Tena, and one month Go TV Max subscription for only 9,900 naira. Terms and conditions apply. Go TV. Love it. Thanks for being there. Now, the ancient town of Odogbolu in Ogun East Territorial District of Ogun State was agog with heavy presence of military personnel, not for the purpose of peacekeeping or prevention of security breach, but to honor a worthy son, patriotic citizen, and thorough army officer who put the name of the town in the global map. Lekon Agbonde captured the activities and proceedings of the three-day funeral of the former Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Donaldson Oladipo Oyeyinka Dia. The intrigues, aesthetics, and ceremony that form the narrative of the three-day activities are clear indication of what the funeral of a worthy general and soldier of Christ should be. Preceded by Christian Wake, the serene town of Odobolu in Ogo State stood in awe as it welcomed an enviable number of distinguished Nigerians and guests from home and abroad who came to celebrate, honor, and bid farewell to a true son of the land. A colorful military display by the Nigerian armed forces set the tone as the remains of the late general were conveyed to the church for the funeral service. Top Nigerians, including a federal government delegation, governor, former governors, and former military administrators, the acting inspector general of police, and top officials of government joined the family to celebrate the life, times, and heroic contributions of late Dia to country and humanity. General Dia's life was a great symbol of service and honor. He was a gallant patriot who was so committed and passionate about our country, Nigeria. Ogo State Governor Dapu Adodo delivered the message of President Bola Tinubu while dignitaries extolled the virtues of the late general. We must not fail to consciously celebrate General Diaz's standing committees of bravery, discipline, courage, integrity, and patriotism. Yes, his discipline, his you know, level of courage, his humility, and in all, his fear of God. So we came here in appreciation of his role while uh, serving as the chief of staff and uh, his support and contributions to the development of our city. It was an embodiment of all that we youths were looking forward to at that time to see how we can model our career, how we can have the grace, the integrity. He was God fearing. That's so important. So as to all the passion, is always hard for everything around him, especially religion, his passion for the country, his passion for the family. The aspect of discipline, because discipline, amongst all of these things, is one of the hardest, you know, to more or less adhere to. So yes, yeah, so those are the things I would advise, you know, both the young, the uh, old uh, Nigerians to look at and try and emulate from General Adipodia. He's a wonderful father, very loving, principled and yet he has a great sense of humor. The true military attributes were fully displayed. The rain failed to disrupt the military proceedings leading to the internment witnessed by top echelon of the Nigerian armed forces including the former head of state General Abdusalami Abubakar. He did well. He contributed his own quota towards the development of this nation. And me and uh, General Zia seem to be running a relay because all the units he commanded, I took over from him, uh, right from uh, brigade to division to the National War College. The 21 gun salute leading of the late general's oration at the graveyard were part of the rituals embodying the barrier of a worthy general as his remains were lowered and committed to hearth dust to dust. A colorful reception for the continuation of the celebration of life of General Dia featured variety of entertainment of guests with artists. 
The late former chief of general staff, Dona Sin Oladipo Yoyinkadia, was born on the 3rd of April 1944, served in Nigeria diligently in various capacities as a military officer, and rose to the pinnacle of his career as the second in command to the head of state. He bore the word farewell on the 26th of March 2023 at the age of 79. He is survived by wives, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. May his dear soul rest in peace. Amen. That's our package for Newsline today. Thank you for watching. Join us again Sunday next week. Good night and God bless Nigeria. Thank <laughs> you.